Hello, beautiful people, future me. Welcome to another programming workout. Let's get into it. So typing practice will be the first one to go. Five minutes, as always. And okay, so I improve my typing. That's the option I like. And we are doing bootstrap, whatever, doesn't matter. All right, start the timer, let's go. Oh my god, my fucking timer. Uh, whatever. Focus, 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 keep keep the errors down. <laughs> oh. <laughs>
Come on. Come on. Uh... What? What? What the fuck was that? I was not pressing anything. All right, so what's the result? I was hoping for the least amount of errors. 2%, 2%, that's not as bad. And I typed like 31 more than I should have. How this, oh, backspace, oh, it counts backspace as well. Hmm, yeah, that makes sense. So that was 15 mistakes. One I typed for backspacing. And this is the entire thing. Oh, okay, so this is, this is some, is this, everything is there, right? Six, six, that's 12, 12 plus seven is 19. Yeah, there is a nine as well. So yeah, it sums up, it sums up. Okay, so they take into account the, the collaterally typed uh, type before backspacing and the backspaces too and that gives me a two percent okay i feel i should stick uh, to have a, a, you know like the minimum amount of uh, of errors at least errors uh, as possible well okay uh well this one says we are over the time limit and we are way over the time limits i'm actually 10 minutes in the video so i'll stop this timer i'll start the under the timer we'll switch to well so many projects open uh okay so that was manage project, project, yeah, and I want spring example, new window, thank you. And then I want my beautiful notes, where are they? Learning. Come on. And this is still loading. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, what? It behaves weirdly. Uh, I'll open the link. OK, 
Okay, transaction management is the is the part I'm doing, and there will be a lot of reading, I think, not much of the coding. So let's get into it. We lost two minutes already. A data transaction is a sequence of actions that are treated as a single unit of work. These actions should either complete complete tiring or take no effect at all. Okay, all are not. Transaction management is an important part of RDBMS-oriented enterprise. Uh, what the RDBMS stands for? This is database. So, Relational database management system. Relational database management system, or right, whatever. Over my team. RDBMS oriented enterprise application to ensure data integrity and consistency. So the data integrity would be, I guess, uh, like one column that should, uh, one row, I mean, that should have updated all of the columns, not just few of them. So that would be the data integrity, I think. And consistency is that, uh, let's say we have a two tables and we would update to two tables, right? And one would have the formed key in uh, in the first one, right? The second one would use a foreign key in a uh, in the first one. And if we happened somehow to update the second one and not this, doesn't make sense that uh, the SQL will not allow us to do that, right? Or is it? Would it be possible? So which consistency they can talk about, like in the sense of being that being same everywhere? I don't know. Oh, they are describing it here. Okay, so we can move on. Integrity and consistency. The concept of transactions can be described with the following four key properties described as asset. Okay, that's the trip. Atomicity, consistency, isolation, durability, atomicity. Transaction should be, I don't know what, I should like have an overview over the, so we have a local and global transactions. Okay, so I think that would be on one machine and multiple machines, I guess. Programmatic and declarative, uh, hmm. I don't know what that means. Uh, programmatic, that's something you have to write, and declarative is like implied. I don't, I don't know. Spring transaction abstractions. So, yeah, we have some layer on top of it, right? So, we have a comet rollback, okay, something. Then we have what? Uh, this is still the transaction abstractions following are the possible values of isolation okay so there's isolation propagation descriptors transaction status we have some methods and <laughs> so there'll be some uh you know like uh the naming convention or whatever I guess. I'll see. So atomicity, a transaction should be treated as a single unit of operation, which means either the entire sequence of operation is successful or unsuccessful. Okay. Consistency. This represents the consistency of a referential integrity of database. I might be, I might read the atomicity, but I don't remember anything. Transaction should be treated as single unit of operation, which means either the entire sequence of operations successful or unsuccessful. Okay, multiple uh, queries or whatever, 
in a transaction and all of them should be executed if or none. That is the automaticity. Consistency. This represents the consistency of the referential integrity of the database, unique primary keys and tables, etc. Hmm. Okay, so I was kind of right, but I thought that it is kind of handled by the database itself. I don't have to provide anything. Uh, maybe it would be possible that I would have some uh some something in my application which will represent data let's say i would have like id i would have an object which would have an id which is already occupied in the database so that might be uh the thing hmm. who knows uh continue isolation there may be many transaction processing with the same data at the same time each transaction should be isolated from others to prevent data corruption. Okay, so this is like the race condition in programming. And that means like, uh, let's say I want to put something in the database and the ID is good example. So uh, a, uh, a transaction A would create ID with number one and then the transaction B would also create number one ID with, with the ID one, right? And then they both try to store it in there. Is that the, the thing? Hmm. Should be isolated from others to prevent data corruption. Okay, or maybe Yeah, maybe it could be that we would have something with the ID and there will be, let's say, account balance. That would be a number, right? And what came to my mind is like, like update, like add the salary, the salary came, right? So we would, uh, the thread or the transaction A would uh, read the value, what is previously in there, like let's say there's a zero and uh, then there will the second transaction come in and it reads uh, there is a zero two and the second that would be let's say that would add a benefit uh, whatever so the salary would be like 1000 you know and uh, then it would store it like into the database update it you know set to 1000 the balance now and uh, then the second uh, second transaction, which would add the benefit, which would be of size of five, for example, then that would like to store it in there, you know. And in the end, you know, it it would just say like set the account balance to five, right? Which is wrong because we should have uh, one thousand and five in there. Uh, at the end, right? Because the employee should get a salary and some like the benefit, which is the size of five in our case. So 1,005. But if we don't isolate that, uh, so uh, when the thread A, uh, that should kind of isolate the database, lock it down, whatever, you know, uh, do everything they want to, you know, like put the 1,000 in it, and only after that, when the transaction A is done doing anything to the database, then the transaction B should be able to read the value, you know, and then add to the 1,005 and put it back. Uh, so that way, uh, I think it's called, that thing I think is called isolation. I think, I don't know. So let's move on. Durability. Once a transaction has completed, the results of this transaction have to be made. Uh, uh, how to be made permanent and cannot be erased from the database due to system failure. Hmm. So what I think uh, this means is that uh it should be stored on a hard drive you know in the 
uh, and not in the working memory of the computer or server RAM. You now, because when you, uh, when for example you have a blackout, you know the electricity goes down, uh, you will lose all your data uh, stored in the RAM. But what is stored on the hard disk that's uh, persisted, right? Uh, if you turn the electricity down, the data will still be there. So the database or whatever uh, or this system, after the transaction has been completed, it should be stored on something persistent, not uh, something which could be damaged by uh, and by the system failure, I can only imagine. Mm, well, it could be the the blackout, but also there could be a problem in your uh, in your application, and there will be bug uh, which will entirely crash uh, your uh, your application, and then uh, your uh, your temporary date temporarily data will be lost, right? All right, that's uh, that's that's what I think it is. Anyway, moving on. A real RDBMS database system will guarantee all four properties for each transaction. Okay, so I don't have a care about it. <laughs> oh well, I know it anyway. The simplistic view of transaction is shoot to the database using SQL as follows. Simplistic view of transaction is shoot to the database using SQL is as follows. Okay. There are three points. Being the transaction using begging transaction command. Okay, so we say we are beginning the transaction. All right. Perform various deleted, update, or insert operation using SQL queries. So there will be a bunch of queries, and we can do whatever we can do using the SQL language. And then, if all the operations are successful, then perform commit. Otherwise, roll back all the operations. So I'm guessing we are using, uh, in the previous step, we are using all these commands. And it's not, it's not written directly to the database yet. It's in some kind of buffer, in some playground, in some sandbox. And only after we check that all of them can be, uh, can be done successfully, only then uh, we will actually update the database itself, or which they call here commit. Uh, commit is the word they are they are using. And otherwise, roll back all the operations. Hmm. Okay, so they roll back. So maybe they don't store it in some kind of like sandbox. Maybe they are actually writing to the database, you know. But they keep track of all of the operation uh which have been done to the database and they will be marked with a transaction right we said begin transaction so what i imagine is that we will go basically backwards you know from all of the updates deletes uh, and so on and we will basically restore all of the touched tables in this transaction to its original states before to its original state yeah uh before we began the transaction in the first place that's how i imagine it okay let's move on so we've complete those three hooray Spring Framework provides an abstract layer on top of different underlying transactions management APIs. Okay, so that's something on top, on extra. Hmm. Or, uh, mm. Okay, so what that would be good for, this layer. Spring Transaction Support aims to provide an alternative to AGB transactions by adding transaction capability capabilities to both shows. So plain old Java object that's usually just a class with some fields in it and that's it, right? Spring supports both programmatic and declarative transaction management. Okay, I still don't know what that means. AGBase requires require an application server, but Spring Transaction Management can be implemented without the need of application server. Okay, so here is some 
something which looks like advantage to me if we don't need something that's always advantage right uh, the problem being here is that i'm not entirely sure what the uh, what this application server is um all right moving on local versus global transactions so this i think i can understand local transactions are specific to a single transactional resource like jdbc connections whereas global transactions can span multiple transactional resources like transactions transaction in distributed system hmm okay so here they are uh talking about the transactional resource like a jdbc connection so there could be multiple connections to one database or there could be multiple connections to like one would be going to the first database and the second one to other one hmm. so so local is the single transactional resource uh, which doesn't have to mean necessarily that that uh, resource or that database is on on the same computer, right? Well, it's not set here. It's set only like a single single one. Okay. And uh, the global transactions can spend multiple transactional resources like transaction in distributed system. So. This looks like, okay, that's like one transaction in distributed system. Not sure how to implement, interpret that. Ah, let's continue. Local transaction management can be useful in a centralized computing environment where application components and resources are located located at single site and transaction management only involves a local data manager running on a single machine local transactions are easier to be implemented hmm. okay so local tra transaction management can be useful in centralized computing environment um, which is the way to go if you have like one connection it seems like by definition you are doing the local transaction Hmm. where application components and resources are located at single site uh, site and this means uh, is a place not like uh, like web page or website yeah, so single site so that they might uh, have in mind a physical and both software location I believe and transaction management only involves a local data manager running on a single machine. And transaction management only involves a local data manager running on a single machine. Okay, so transaction management. Uh, I'm still not sure. Uh, only involves a local data manager running on a single machine a local data manager would that is the database and it's on a single machine okay so <laughs> so here the side they meant uh, a software and on a single machine that would be referring to a a hardware okay so local transactions are easier to be implemented i can imagine uh, because you don't have to juggle multiple connections hmm. a global transaction management is required in a distributed computing environment where all the resources are distributed across multiple systems so multiple servers multiple machines multiple virtual boxes whatever in such a case Transaction management needs to be done both at local and global levels. Okay, so that means we handle like one database and then we have to like make sure that, you know, like the consistency between those like databases is still kept, maybe. Distributed or global transaction is executed across multiple systems. Okay, so that would be the hardware, and it's 
it's <coughs> oh, excuse me and its execution requires coordination between the global transaction management requires a coordination between the global transaction management and all the local data managers of the involved system yeah so that would be the harder part which they were talking about right well they said simpler uh, in the local one or easier okay now programmatic visitors declarative so these guys spring supports two types of transaction management a programmatic transaction management and declarative transaction management the programmatic transaction management means that you have to manage a the transaction with the help of programming that gives you extreme flexibility but it's difficult to maintain okay the declarative that means you separate transaction management from the business code you only use annotations or xml based configuration to manage the transactions and there's like this pop-up links which i can have a look into it's loading slow oh well uh <laughs> then we have like multiple more things okay so declarative transaction management is preferable over pro programmatic transaction management though it is less flexible than programmatic transaction transaction management which allows you to control transactions through your code but as a kind of cross-cutting concern declarative transaction management can be modular modularized with the AOP approach a version of what was the AOP that was uh, AOP meaning uh, AOP meaning and so uh, a version of aspect oriented programming that aims to increase modularity by link separation of cross cuttings all right declarative transactions is preferable okay 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 what they are writing in here so the programmatic transact it's still in load how the hell is that possible okay so programmatic i imagine that we will write the queries and the uh declarative would be just uh and you know, they are using like this interfaces and so on so you basically let the spring to write the uh the query all right i don't know i don't know and we are out of the time uh which is done that is better than perfect i'll make uh I will update my notes and it says local versus global directions. Okay, so that was that. I did the previous as well. As a matter. Oh, come on. Everything's so slow. Okay, like that. And now when I save it, that's good over the time limit that means we are done done better than perfect and i will say to you goodbye my friends i'll see you next time bye